all right, the Samsung Galaxy S10, allegedly codenamed Beyond, is about eight months away, which is usually way too long for us to know anything concrete about the phone. But I've spent the last two whole days digging through everything that we do know, and I think we've got some answers. There will not be a notch. The fact that Samsung created an entire marketing campaign poking fun at Apple's notch, creating this character with a notched haircut, is pretty indicative. And they've just recently made a second version of this commercial, featuring Notch Man's son. And this would be a pretty poor move if they were planning to include a notch. Also, since the S9 and the S9 Plus are clear of a notch, and from what we've seen from the Galaxy Note 9, that's clear of a notch, it wouldn't really make much sense for it to appear in the S10. On to the next thing. We've got confirmation of an in-display fingerprint scanner. A report from ET News, who are in direct talks with Samsung, has basically confirmed that we're gonna see the feature. And yeah, they're not gonna be the first company to do this, which on one hand does make it less exciting, but on the other hand, it probably means they're gonna do it better. Samsung has, understandably, been a little cautious about using this tech from a security standpoint. If, after they'd started distributing millions of units, it transpired that it wasn't accurate enough, that you could hand your phone to your friend and they'd be able to get into it, that would be collateral damage for the brand. So because they've not already done it, because they weren't rushing to be the first one to include this fingerprint scanner, it probably means that when they do include it, it's because they've made a conscious decision that it's gonna make the experience better. The same report also states that the S10 will use an ultrasonic sensor from Qualcomm, which is supposedly greater than the optical sensors seen on the Vivo Apex. This would work with a transmitter under the screen, firing ultrasonic sound waves out. Some would be absorbed and some bounced back depending on the ridges of the finger, and then a receiver under the screen can then interpret what waves arrive back and build an image of the finger. And because of the way this works, Samsung would be able to build essentially a 3D image of your finger, which is more than the current 2D capacitive sensors are able to do. The screen of the phone could well also be a speaker. At a recent Samsung display event, the company showed off its new sound on display technology. This uses an actuator or motor behind the display, which vibrates the screen very subtly to emit the sound. This wouldn't reach a huge volume and the sound quality would likely be pretty forgettable, but it could make an interesting alternative to the earpiece. The earpiece is something companies have been struggling with for the last couple of years as displays are getting larger and this screen display could also mean you can put the phone anywhere over your ear, not just one specific point over the earpiece. Now this idea also marries up quite nicely with the supposed 93% plus screen to body ratio that we'll be getting, according to Ice Universe on Twitter who has a pretty great track record. Now, from the same leak, you might have noticed something else, speed. Not only the usual high performance system on a chip, but 5G connectivity, universal flash storage 3.0, and next generation LPDDR5 RAM. 5G is the next big step after 4G, and this comes with the usual substantial increases in potential download speeds, but something that will be more noticeable to a lot of people is lower latency. UFS 3.0, this faster storage, is gonna make everything feel snappier and could be up to twice as fast as the current UFS 2.1. And the faster RAM is also very plausible. We know it's something that's being worked on right now and it'll carry with it even more performance and even better efficiency. Samsung Galaxy S9 sales weren't the best. Even with wider availability, aggressive discounts, and a better launch strategy, Samsung's S9 phones have only sold marginally more than last year's S8s, and less than the S7s before it. And the company through this has probably come to realization that their brand isn't quite as powerful as Apple's right now. They're not at a stage yet where they can just release a small iterative upgrade and expect everyone to go out and upgrade to it. So this is just a general push for Samsung to, in the future, prioritize the big phone launches as opposed to the incremental upgrades. The perks of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Because in all this excitement, it's easy to forget that there is still another big flagship to be launched from Samsung before the S10. And it's all but guaranteed that the S10 will also benefit from the upgrades we see with the Note 9. So from the latest rumors, that seems to be a redesigned software, improved cameras on both the front and the back, as well as faster face unlocking. 
2019 is going to be the 10th anniversary, and Samsung is pretty aware of this. They have referred to the phone as their 10th anniversary device, indicating that it's not just another phone. So right from the beginning, the plan seems to have been to make this a big one, and it's safe to assume that this phone has been a long time in the making, that its development started either at the same time as the S9, or maybe even before it. It's not clear how this will fit alongside the foldable Galaxy X, also supposedly coming next year, but it is clear that the S9 was created as a filler device, and that the S10 is what it was filling in for. Some sources claim a triple camera, others have said a display with over 600 pixels per inch. Nobody really knows. When you've got rumours that are six, seven, eight months in advance, there's always going to be a heavy dose of speculation in them. But the core message is consistent, that because this phone is a big deal for Samsung, there'll be at least one big new feature. An early launch. This is still speculative, but there is potential for an announcement as early as CES 2019. That's in January. A leaked roadmap suggests that in 2019, Samsung's doing things a bit differently. They'll release the revolutionary foldable Galaxy X in place of when the usual S-line phones are announced at Mobile World Congress in February. And as a result of this, the current rumors are saying they will shift the S10 event to this earlier date so as not to get in the way of itself. All right, so a lot to take in there, but personally, I'm really excited for the S10. And for the reasons given in this video, there is a lot to look forward to. If you did enjoy the video, then I've got plenty more smartphone news coverage on the channel. So I'm gonna leave that as a card above. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.